and that I don't believe in speeches because the American people want to see your eyes. We don't trust anything anymore. By a show of hands, how many of you trust Washington, basically, to do the right thing? If you trust Washington, <laughs> you even laugh. Raise your hands if you trust Washington. We got one individual in the entire room who trusts Washington. Hello, Mrs. Bush, how are you? <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. How many of you trust Wall Street? Raise your hands. And you're not even related to Ken Lay at Enron. <laughs> we have lost faith and confidence in the institutions, in the people who govern us, in those who manage us. And it's a tragedy. We used to be the most optimistic country on the face of the globe. We thought things were always going to be The sun will come out tomorrow, that famous Annie song. Now when a politician says that to us, we don't believe them. We don't trust Republicans, we don't trust Democrats, we don't trust anyone because they make promises to us that they cannot keep. You're one of the youngest people in here. Social Security won't be, I, shouldn't, I don't want to upset him or anything. <laughs> but I just remember the words Social Security and don't depend on it. Things are tough right now. The economy, the international situation, jobs, taxes, energy, the environment, health care, and we don't seem to be able to talk to each other anymore. The fact that you're willing, and we're going to make this totally interactive, but the fact that you're actually willing to listen to me for three minutes, you know what the town halls have been like. Everyone yells and screams at each other. Why can't we be civil? Why can't we listen to people who we don't necessarily agree with? Many of you probably know me. How many of you watch Fox News? Raise your hands. I love you. How many of you watch CNN? I knew there had to be a few people left. How many of you watch MSNBC? The only news network that has more letters in its name than viewers. <laughs> and by the way, that joke cost me the chance to be on MSNBC. <laughs> Someone has no sense of humor, Phil Griffin. Uh, he will get that. We watch news now, and we collect news to affirm us rather than to inform us. And so we don't even share the same facts anymore. I, I wrote, someone doesn't watch news. Oh, you still watching the radio? <laughs> I need this for a second. I wrote this for a reason. I am going to put it up. By the way, you have no idea how much makeup they use to get me to look like this. <laughs> they told me they, I'm the before, the before and after photo. Uh, I wanted to correct the record on what Americans actually thought. If you are buying this book because you are a Republican and you're outraged with Barack Obama, I'm not sure this is for you. If you're buying this book because you're a Democrat and you want an explanation for 2008, I'm not sure this is for you. If you are an American first, regardless of politics and trying to understand what Americans really think, what they really believe and what they really want, then this is for you. It goes into our, our daily lives. And in fact, I'm going to show you some of this right now. It goes into, it does have a chapter on government. It has a chapter on employment. It has a chapter on religion because it's important in people's lives. It has a chapter on Gen 2020. Is anyone here born between the ages of 18 and 20? Anyone between the ages of 18 and 29 in this room? For you all, God, your life is so screwed. <laughs> Can I suggest heavy sedation? <laughs> How many of you are of retirement age, 65 and older? There is no such thing as retirement anymore. You know, the saddest thing for me is when I do focus groups with people who had saved enough that they thought that they could retire. And then they watch the stock market in the last year collapse. And they now have to look about going back to work. They'll never get their same job. They'll never have the same opportunities and they're going to struggle. We have a lot of Americans right now who are struggling. I'm grateful that C-SPAN is here because it's nice to have a conversation where we can talk about what ills us without being angry, where we can disagree without being disagreeable. And then the chapter has recommendations for the future, and I will get to that uh, in a moment. What I'd like to do 
is just walk through a little bit of data. I know that it's whited out up there. That is the only known photograph of Hillary Clinton after she discovered Monica Lewinsky. 72% of Americans, 72% are mad as hell and not going to take it anymore. You know what that's from? The movie Network, one of the great films of all time. Every generation other than the 18 to 29 year olds are angry. And the older that you get, the angrier you are. And it's because of promises that weren't kept. And frankly, we do blame everyone. But this is why you see all that yelling on television. And the problem is, it's on the blogs, it's on talk radio, because there really is that much anger and it's all about fear. I, if you can do a wide shot, because I'd like to get this audience. How many of you are better off than your parents when they were your age? If you think your quality of life is better than them, raise your hands and keep them up. Look how many hands are up. How many of you believe that your quality of life, yours, is worse than your parents when they were your age? One, two, three, four, five, six. And by the way, four out of the six are sitting in the front row. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> now, show of hands, how many of you truly believe, not want, but believe that your children are going to have a better quality of life than you when they get to be your age? Raise your hands. Look at how few hands are up. If you want to understand that anger, are you guys married? You're not. You're just together? How long have you been together for? 40 years. 40 years. Three. Three. <laughs> he said 40, she said three. There's something wrong about this group right here. No, I don't think you want to put the microphone near them. I think that they're doing something that we don't want to film on television. That is why we are angry, because part of the American dream is intergenerational improvement. I'm looking at a lot of people who have a lot of kids here, I'm sure, and grandkids. Are there any great-grandparents here? Really? How many children do, do you have? Three sons. Three sons. How many grandchildren? Five. Five. And how many great-grandchildren? Just one. How old? Four. Four. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that your great-grandchild will have it as good as you had it? No. You don't. Why not? Just the way everything is today. The way everything is. Is there anything in particular that, that concerns you or scares you? Well, I think the, um, all of the politics that go on to everything and no one really seems to get the picture. They don't know what we really want. So for you, it's the politics that's mm -hmm. the problem. Well, all of it. Some of it. Mm -hmm. I'm making her very nervous right yes. now. <laughs> Don't worry, the camera's behind you. So it's. <laughs> Let me ask you who came, who drove here more than 30 minutes to get here? Who drove here more than 45 minutes? More than an hour? An hour and 15? An hour and 30? Who drove here two hours to be here today? Okay, come on up. If you drove two hours to be here, what bothers you the most? Are you mad as hell? I don't know. I take the long view. I'm Reverend Thomas Hooker's distant great granddaughter. And what bothers me, um, well, my father worked in the oil fields in Bakersfield for Atlantic Richfield. And my biggest concern is our energy future. And are you confident that we'll solve it before it gets worse? No, I'm not. I think we're hugely dependent on oil. But, you know, with the South Texas uh, nuclear project being a real problem. But, you know, yesterday, the Chinese and Cielo out of Austin inked that project for uh, wind power in West Texas, even though T. Boone Pickens is pulling in a four-county area, T. Boone is pull, pulling out of a four-county area in the panhandle. So I think it's very questionable. I don't know if I feel badly one way or the other or, or confident. I, I, I'm uncertain. By the way, if I were you, my greatest anger would be related to someone named Hooker. <laughs> okay, that did not work. <laughs> Who else drove two hours to get here? 